Hello everyone, and welcome. My name is DJ Neeks, and I'd like to welcome you to a playthrough of what well, at, at the time was the fastest selling IP in video game history. A game that when it came on the market, a lot of people were very surprised by it. That it was groundbreaking, it was unique, it was unlike something anything we had seen before. And the premise was so good. The gameplay was fun, even though it actually ends up becoming one of the most repetitive games in history. In fact, the game is infamous for it, as we see glimpses of a, what looked like a trailer or something. Assassin's Creed. And this is the original, the first one. You're going to quickly realize, as I found out, look, you don't even get to choose the options. You just choose new. It becomes an incredibly repetitive game, but here we go. This is how it all started. The Assassin's Creed franchise, yes, this game, this right here is the game that started it all. The game that I think Michael Fassbender is doing the movie on. <laughs> I applied my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceive that this also was a chasing after wind. For in much wisdom is much grief. You can tell that the graphics are a little uh and sorrow. Huh. You've got a problem. I can't anchor him to the huh. enemy. Too much psychological trauma. He's rejecting huh. the treatment, retreating. Huh. Desmond, I need you to try and relax. Let me try and stick around. Focus. Ah, oh, yes, I'm starting to remember. Recognize what the heck is going on? <laughs> Just a picture of the past. It can't hurt. Okay, hold on. Can I can I go to yes and go to options? Please tell me I can put subtitles on. Let's see. Uh, animus blood. Now nah, let's turn the blood off. There we go. That way it doesn't have to be look as brutal. In fact, I do want to, of course, uh, get my little warning here about content. This is a mature rated game, and this, in fact, this whole franchise is made rated mature. Um, now, looks thank now good thing that they were able to turn off, uh, give us the option to turn off the blood. But uh, there's also gonna there's gonna be violence, there's gonna be language, and uh, there's a. I think that's I think that's about it. There's also going to be some elements that, uh, you know, they they always put out a warning before about uh, that uh, the game was made by different people of uh, religions and beliefs and all these different things because of course this game is going to take place during the uh, the Holy Crusades in uh, the cities of uh, I think it was Damascus, Jerusalem, and um, I forget the name of the third city. We're going to find out later, but uh, yeah. So, uh, let's see. Okay, I don't see... Uh, it looks like it may not be giving me an option to turn on the subtitles. Wait, what was that? Hold L1 to lock? Hmm. That's off. Yeah, it looks like I may not be having subtitles in this game. Sorry, guys. It looks like it may not give me the option to give you subtitles. I'm sorry. <laughs> Working. Give it a moment, Miss Jones. You'll adjust. The first time is never easy. We're losing him. That's enough, Miss Stillman. We need to pull him out. Now. All right, Desmond. We're going to try and bring you out. What's going on? <laughs> I can move this at the camera. You okay? <gasps> what the? I told you he'd be fine. Bastards! Now, now, I just saved your life. Saved my life? Oh, I can change it to change. You kidnapped the camera view. You strapped me into that thing. Animus. It's an animus. I don't animus. even know you people. Why are you doing this to me? You have information we need, Mr. Miles. Information? I'm a bartender, for Christ's sakes. Huh. What do you want me to do, teach you how to mix a martini? We know who you are, what you are. 
I don't know what you're talking about. Don't play coy with me. There isn't time. You're an assassin. And whether you realize it or not, you've got something that my employers want. Locked away in that head of yours. But I'm not an assassin. Not anymore. Yes, uh your file indicated as much. Something about an escape. Most fortunate for us. Uh what do you want from me? For you to do as you're told. The Animus will allow us to locate what we need. Once we have it, you'll be free to go. I am uh not going back in there. Then we'll induce a coma and continue our work. When we're done, you'll be left to die. Truth be told, the only reason you're still conscious is because this approach saves <coughs> us time. Excuse me. You're insane. So what is it, Mr. Miles? Live or die? Lie down. Press any button to interact. Huh. Okay. A wise decision. Animus. Whoa. Where Turn the line a little bit. You're inside the Animus. Which is... It's a projector that renders genetic memories in three dimensions. Genetic memory? Seems you'll need a bit of a tutorial. <sighs> Very well. We'll start simple. What is a memory? Mr. Miles? It's the recollection of a past event. Specific to the individual remembering the event. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> what if I told you that the human body not only housed an individual's memory, but the memories of his ancestors as well? What? Genetic memory. Really? If you will. Who are you, by the Migration, way? Migration, hibernation, reproduction. How do animals know when and where to go? What to do? That's just animal instinct. Now you're arguing semantics, Mr. Miles. Whatever you call it, the fact remains. These creatures hold knowledge absent the requisite first-hand experience. I've spent the past 30 years trying to understand why. I discovered something most fascinating. Our DNA functions as an archive. It contains not only genetic instructions passed down from previous generations, but memories as well. Huh. The memories of our ancestors. And the Animus lets you decode and read these DNA files. Precisely. Huh. But there's a problem. This is the specific memory we're trying to access. Unfortunately, okay. when we try and open the memory, your mind withdraws. You lack the confidence to step into your ancestor's body. That's what happened earlier. You got knocked out of the target memory and pushed back to a more stable state. Why? It's your subconscious. It's resisting. We found similar reactions among patients who undergo hypnosis to relive traumatic events. They can't jump directly into the specific memory. They need to be eased in. Even then, there can be problems. Huh. So how do we fix it? We find a memory you can synchronize with, and we move forward from there. You'll get used to it. This is the closest we can get, so it's where we'll have to start. Huh. I'm uploading the tutorial program now. Okay, then. And who is this ancestor that I'm reliving the memories of? Warning. Data stream unstable. Attempting to restore synchronization. Huh. Hello, Subject 17. 17. This tutorial has been prepared in order to better acclimate you to the Animus's control system. Instructions will follow shortly. The synchronization bar represents how in sync you are with your ancestors' memories. Huh. If you ever fall completely out of sync, the Animus will restore you to your last synchronized position. You are currently dangerously close to desynchronization. Huh. Please follow all forthcoming instructions in order to restore system stability. Huh. The Animus utilizes a puppeteering concept to control the actions of your ancestor. Okay. I'm loading subroutines to validate your body's adaptation to the Animus. We will begin by exploring the default actions of each input. While standing still, use the head button to observe your environment. Faceless people. 
use your empty hand to walk through these jar carriers without causing them to drop what they're holding. Proceed to the marker to continue the synchronization process. But without making them drop anything, without causing a ruckus. Well done. <laughs> well done. The animus differentiates between two fundamental actions, low profile and high profile. Low profile actions are socially acceptable. High profile actions are more action oriented. Hold the high profile button to see how your heads up display changes the context of the puppeteering inputs. Grab. Excellent. We will continue your synchronization process by testing some high-profile actions. Grab and throw this individual onto the marker by using the empty hand button in high profile. Good. Just grab him and throw him to the ground. Using your legs button in high profile will allow you to sprint. Sprinting is useful to escape from soldiers or to get closer to a fleeing target. However, be careful not to bump into anyone, hmm. for you can lose your balance and tumble to the ground. Oh yeah, I remember that. Oh, sprinting. At reach times I'd be so before this man does. Well done. <laughs> the animus will also provide other important information. The social status icon gives you information on your social status. Ah, the top left up there. The different states will be explained in context oh, soon. This. this icon appears when a soldier is looking at you. Yep. The yellow color means the soldier is either unaware or suspicious of who you are. To illustrate the change in awareness level, you will stealth assassinate this soldier. First, lock onto your target. Now, select your hidden blade. Ah. With your blade selected, walk up to the soldier and assassinate him by using your armed hand button. And then this guy walks over, sees the dead body, sees me. Where's the one responsible for this? I think this game came out back in 2008, I think. So you can tell the graphics are a little bit dated. The dead body has alerted the soldier and changed his awareness to informed, as represented by the red witness indicator. Aggressive actions or socially unacceptable behavior undertaken at this time will likely provoke an armed response. Hmm. Provoke this soldier. 